Hi, I'm Carol and thank you for stopping by to see my video. I am really excited to be sitting here today. It has been over 18 months since my last video and I'm not going to soft pedal it. Mental health is so important people and I had not been taking care of mine at all. I stopped crafting. I stopped honestly doing a lot of things. Um, not depressed, but anxiety got the best of me about two and a half months into the pandemic. And being at home with my kids full time is they were struggling, my husband was gone, and I, I don't want to say I lost it, but I lost me. So last summer, after a year of living like that, I finally made the effort to seek help. And I just want to say, I don't know why I took so long to do this. I have struggled with, I don't, I said anxiety earlier. I don't have a diagnosis of anxiety, but my behaviors are very indicative. Well, I like to call them anxiousness. That's how I differentiate it in my head. And I have been struggling with that my entire life. And after a year, of basically world changing style of living, I couldn't do it by myself anymore. So I sought help. I am currently in therapy and it has been one of the best experiences in my life. And then I'm finally doing the work on what I need to do mentally. So I just wanna say if you have that, if you have difficulties, please, please seek professional help. And for me, my inner demon is perfectionism. It has been my entire life from, I still hold memories of kindergarten of the things that I didn't do right and they haunt me. Okay, that's not normal by the way. I just wanna say I am well aware that there are plenty of things in our childhood that define who we are, but the stories that I tell myself are so not in tune with my actual existence that it is very easy for me to shut down. And so about three weeks ago, my therap I was bemoaning this to my therapist about how I do not, not just that I start things, but that I want to start things and can spend a lot of time, a lot of time, telling myself why I shouldn't do it and how I'm going to fail at it. She said, What's the worst thing that can happen for you? this small thing I was talking about? It was like a house project. And the worst thing that can happen is said, literally some caulk. She's like, that's it? I was like, well, yeah, and I have all, for this project, I have all the tools. I have the actual information. Like, I know how to do it. I've done it before. But what was stopping me is what if I get it wrong? And I have... That has been like the story of my life again for the last, really since May 2020. And around the same time that I had this discussion with her, it was the first time I picked up any of my cross stitch since May of 2020. Catching a reframe here. And it was just a small thing. I was like, oh, you know what? I just want to put in a couple little rows of color because it was, it was a piece that I didn't literally be sitting on the end table because I pulled it out of a drawer, didn't do anything with it, stared at it, put it back, pulled it out, kind of getting the idea, but I was like, you know, put in 10 stitches. What's the worst that can happen with 10 stitches? The answer was nothing. It was great. I was so like, oh, hey, color. I love dealing with, I pulling out my supplies. It was as if I had refound a piece of what matters to me. So I was like, okay, that's cool. And I didn't do a lot more than that on that day. The next day I'm like, well, you know, if I put a little more in, that'll be fun. And I decided to go back and actually open up my Instagram account. And I realized one of the cool things that I did have with it is that you can see some of my progress pics. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, snap a photo, see what I got. And then I was like, well, okay, you know, there's a project. I'll do two days on it. And then before I know it, I have been not just stitching up a storm, but I've also real, I don't say realized because I'm going to make this mistake again, but as I told my husband, 
when I'm not doing well mentally, I don't even do any of my hobbies. And he had noticed that I had not, that I had retreated all the way back to literally one hobby. And that was it. And it was only because it's more money dumped in it. So I kind of have to. But that like the ones around the house that I wasn't doing any of those. And that as I've been working on my responses to the world around me, and about correctly ordering my thinking, that my desire to do the things that I want to do, i.e. in this case cross-stitch, had come back on its own. So I don't want to call this like a loss of the stitching bug or mojo or whatever people are calling it these days. It was about me finally facing my avoided behaviors that kept me from doing the things that I actually wanted to do and valued and that and facing that and being more cognizant of it, talking about it, so verbalizing it to the people around me, like, hey, I'm doing blah, that all of a sudden it just kind of flowed together of what do I value? Well, I value spending time with the needle in hand and going through fabric. So cool, here I am today. So all of that is really to say that Please don't ever get to the place that I was at in the case of, like I said, a year. Almost think of it as in stasis. I didn't accomplish the thing. Like, I don't mean like, as far as my hobbies. I mean, I didn't accomplish a thing. I spent most of it almost just playing mindless computer games. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you for listening to all that. Because you're not here to hear about my mental health. You're really here to see my stitching. But I want to tell you, I have had the best last couple weeks of just making stuff happen. I basically what I ended up doing was thinking back to where I was at the end, at the beginning of 2019. What things did I want to accomplish? I have some new starts since then that have gone almost nowhere, but that's okay. We're going to get to this. So this week, okay, I guess I'm going to cover. In this case, this video is covering what I've been stitching over the last two and a half weeks. And I'm going to kind of show them to you as, hey, this is what I've been doing. And hopefully I'll remember to be like, oh, and this is where it was at some point in the past. I hope. And then I'm going to actually, it's, we'll call this a mini whip parade because a, I don't have that many whips. But also, I just want to almost use this as a baseline. This is what I have open right now that I'm working on and sharing with you. So first up, Heaven and Earth Designs Winter Kiss. The artwork is by Adele Sessler, and I started this one in January 2017. There was a Facebook group challenge for getting, I don't remember how many pages done. I didn't do it. I totally didn't happen. Worked on it kind of intermittently through October 2018. Thanks Instagram for having the dates on there so I know. And then I just put it down. It is on 25 count Lugana, and I, one over one, and I have had, in the past, issues finding the right lighting. I actually even noted on my Instagram, I have a lot of, my eyes can't handle black. My eyes are fine, by the way. I, my prescription is up to date. It's just, I, lighting is so important and I will not give myself the right lighting. So it's on a, you know, it's a small count. Whenever one, it is my smallest count project for that. And I wasn't setting myself up for success, so I just didn't do work on the project. Well, I decided just on a whim, go ahead and pull it back out. And guys, I got a page finish. I was so excited. So here it is today, and all of this is page one. This is page two, which I'd started roughly around the same time. So I'm about two thirds of the way down the page. The uh, grid work is done in like a silk fiber. I just have a spool of it. So as I pull it off, like where you can see it, this is only the area I have left in page two. It's the next one up on my rotation, and I'm really excited to get back to this because I am really loving this look. It is interesting because on the camera, obviously, it looks very, very gray. The bulk of the colors in here are not even the grays. They are a lot of red. They're not reds, but they're the gray reds. And a lot of, I'll call them grayish. But combine them all together, it looks fantastic. So super excited to get back to this one. 
Now, after spending a week on that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this rotation stitching thing again. I've never been terribly successful with it in the past, but I almost needed a, I had been getting a little obsessive on wanting to just keep putting stitches because I mean, once I got the page, I was like, oh, the next one is in sight. I wanna keep working on it, keep working on it. I was like, okay, let's get a palette cleanser, if you will. And I just, just because of the floss that I had, basically I went through and found the first floss card that was a project that I was working on. And I came to a prairie garden. I had bought this and meant to do it as a motif a day or motif a month because it is um, four wide, three down, so there's 12 in total, and do one a month in 2019. Well, spoiler, that didn't happen. And I had kind of intermittently picked it up and put it back. I forgot that it's a relatively fast stitch. So I am here. I had finished, I don't know, from the last time I did a floss tip, I don't even know where I was, but this, finished this one that had been probably hanging out since 2020 and started the one that you can see that I'm working on. I also have like that needle parked in the uh, fabric itself. I don't know when I started doing that again. Like the, I feel like that's a habit that I've gotten away from. But anyway, I'm really, really pleased with how this one is coming along and I've been taking it in the car because a lot, all the borders and most of the leaves are done in one color that I cannot remember off the top of my head. And so it's actually been a pretty nice, like slightly mindless, I spent a lot of time right now waiting for kids to get done with activities and come out and see me. So it's a great one for that. Um, the parking lot lights are not always, because the color resolution is awful, you kind of want something that doesn't require a lot of thought. because. I'm depending on ambient light, and again, street lights don't have good color resolution. So I did two days on that. Cool. Hey, this rotation thing's working for me too. So then I was like, well, let's just grab the next one. The next one was on my fancy floss, and it is pretty much all earmarked for Ink Circles Tapestry. I started this one sometime in the distant past. I'm gonna have to put that information on the screen because I don't know where it is. But I had gone to the center, I started off in the upper left corner, wasn't loving that, gone to the center. And the idea is that I'm supposed to be spiraling out from the inside. I don't know if that's the best idea, I might change that. But in this case, it was an opportunity to just spend a couple days doing two small motifs. When I got done, great. When it didn't get done, that's great too. I will say I discovered what I don't love about this project. And it's, I thought it was about the size of the stitching or the changing of the colors, and it's not. The center, actually I should just go ahead and show you this so that I'm not just merely describing. So here is my version of Ink Circles Tapestry. It is two over two 30 count weeks dye works. The color is light khaki and I'm gonna, put this center here where you can see it, you'll note it's grays, there's a fair amount of brown and grush and gold. I first, I now discovered I have a love-hate relationship with that color grush and gold. There is a strong green tone to it that I don't like, like I just don't like the color. And the, for this flower motif here. The stem is done in piney woods. I don't really like that color either. Like, it's like really gross to me. So I was thinking, okay, is it just the small motifs? And then when I was working the flower itself for that, the red, sorry, put that back up, is in the color mulberry. I love mulberry. So I realized, I guess it's more of a case of just the colors aren't calling to me when I'm working on the small thing, because as I'm stitching it, the completed areas look awesome. It's just that I don't always, if I don't love the colors, then it's almost like I don't love the stitching. So this one's a weird project for me, and I realized that I can't put too much time in it at any given moment. I found one of my old planners that I'd written, like, 
almost like I created this punishment chart for me where I was supposed to spend all my time working on the project I didn't want to work on, tapestry, and not as much time working on the thing I actually wanted to deal with. So the right answer for this was it's a small piece. It's a, it's a small piece. It's uh, 199 stitches by 199 stitches, but obviously within it, each of the smaller little um, bits, just do the one little thing and call it good. And it is so, so much better that way. So it's kind of, that one's too complicated for it to be a travel stitch, but it's definitely a, don't spend a huge amount of time on it at any given time. Now this one next up is Mirabilia Designs Autumn Queen. And I know that I had listed this as something to start and hopefully complete in 2019. Well, I didn't start it in 2019, so I certainly didn't complete it in 2019. I did, however, start it in March 2020. And I am actually going to go ahead because I have a couple of pictures that they are on my Instagram accounts. So I'm going to show them here in order. And you can see that I had pretty much stopped in May 2020, didn't touch it, and then picked it up again a couple weeks ago and been having the time of my life. So check that out. Yes, loving it. I was not originally convinced of the big pink parts there that are the lightest part of her skirt. Uh, they're in DMC 818. It is a very interesting look. So when I first started, I was a little unsure. The more I do the skirt, the more it's working for me. So I probably put in close to 1200 stitches this weekend. And I'm actually having to put it down again, because I don't want to burn out on this particular project because I love it so much. So this is my, I am going to complete this this year because I already have two of the seasonal queens done and I want to, I have everything for kidding up for winter and royal holiday and all the other mirabilias that want to be made. So I am going to make the, this is kind of like my biggest probably completable project. They hate winter kiss. I'm honestly not certain that it will ever get completed just because it's my only full coverage and it's really my biggest project but it's fun to work on. So, but if the ones I, when I start projects, I actually have the intention of getting them finished and put on the wall. I am not a process stitcher. I am a product stitcher. So you can see how this is a problem with me not having, um, gotten anything done, but recently, but yes, I, all the Mirabilia's I love. So I want them framed so they can go in my bedroom where they belong. And so I'm going to go over the rest of my in-process projects. Some of them have been hibernating for a long time. Some of them are new starts that are tiny when I was ambitiously thinking maybe my problem with how I'm feeling about stitching is I just don't have projects I like. I don't know. Uh, but at any rate, this is kind of a nice baseline of where I am right now. So I'm happy to share it with you. And we're going to start with this one, which is called Summer Joy. I can't remember who it's from. I have the chart around here. Uh, I remember nothing about it. This is the worst. Uh, this is originally my daughter's project and she abandoned it. In hindsight, I totally understand why she abandoned it. It, it was a little, despite there not being a lot of color changes or it's not complex, but it's also, frankly, not interesting enough to have held the attention of a elementary school girl. So she dumped it on me because she's like, I like the idea of it being done, but I don't want to do it. And you know what? That's okay. I've messed with it a little bit, only a little bit, and I don't love it. It's a 14 count, so it's a 14 count Ada hand dyed of some variety. I don't know anything about the dye. I know nothing about that. She picked it out. I mean, and I wasn't paying attention at the time. It's been that long. And it's not, I haven't worked on Ada in a long time, to be honest. So I don't know if this one is very like, it's not so much that it's stiff. It's just that it has kind of a rough feel under the hands. And I don't love it. The actual stitching is not particularly high contrast against the background fabric. 
So, it's one of these projects that was better in her head than in actual execution, but I am going to try to make this a this year finish. So she has on her door a hang, little hanging, it's almost like, no, it's not like a bill pole, it's not that long, but some sort of decorative hanger that is fall themed. It has oranges and golds and it's on like a rustic fabric. It's really cute. The only problem, she's had this continuously on her door now for about three years because she only has the one. <laughs> and it's great when it's fall and winter, but it would be nice to get her something that is a little more summer themed. That's where this is gonna come in. So I am gonna, uh, hopefully get this finished relatively quickly. It's not a huge design and turn it into a hanging object. I don't even know what you call them. Oh, well, but something to put her in her door. So that puts me, it really needs to be done May ish. Now I say this, I don't like deadline stitching. So Probably shouldn't put a huge hard deadline on it, but it's more I would like to have this one just be gone because it's small. So next up is what is my current travel stitching piece? And this is Summertime Coverlet from Heartstring Samplery. And I am not going to further than when I had messed with this back in 2019. I don't remember when I started out. Anyway, this is this is a well-traveled piece. It um, has gone to the pharmacy. It's gone to the D... Did it go to the DMV? I don't think it went to the DMV. Anyway, it's spent a lot of time sitting in waiting rooms. Uh, had it at the dentist this week. It was very exciting. It is one that I have found also... I can't spend too much time on it. I don't know if it's because these flowers are so repetitive feeling. That might be part of it. Part of it is where the break in the pages and the chart are because... In order to do the flowers right here, you actually have to have two pages out and open, and it's kind of a pain to track back and forth. Also, it just it's one that if I sit there and I say, oh, I'm going to do a single length of floss, because it is one over two on the 36 count. If I do that, it's great. If I do one, if I get ambitious, sitting at the side of a um, match this week, I did, and that was it. I didn't need to do any more than that. So I am going to treat this one as it'll get done when it gets done. Uh, I also have, I don't know if, I'm going to put this back up. And I don't know if you can see it. At some point, the uniform blue that this is being done in decided it must have gotten wet. We'll talk about that. Uh, got wet and it kind of, so there, the fabric is actually slightly blue. <laughs> Slightly. It's at least uniformly so. Good thing it's uniform blue. But uh, I don't know how that one's going to turn out in the end. It, this was my like first project that I bought where I'm like, ooh, I really want to do something monochromatic. I still love the monochromatic thing. I think I just don't like stitching flowers. So kind of looking forward at some point, at some point, no deadlines on this one. Getting all those top flowers done so I can go down and do all the stuff on the bottom that I actually really like. And But the nice part, since it is only a single, like I said, it's the one uh, strand being used, It makes and since it's monochromatic, this one is a really easy travel piece. I sometimes am lazy and don't even bother taking like snips with me because I'll just make a point of where I'm working is not a place where I have to worry about cutting fresh thread. So we'll see how that one goes in the future. Next up is my Stitch Mania 2020 start. Single start. Well, I guess we'll call that a good Stitch Mania. Anyway, this is Dreaming of Tulips from Rosewood Manor. And I got this far all within the span of a couple days in May 2020. I haven't touched it since. I only just found the chart yesterday. So it's really cute. I just haven't done a lot with it. Uh, I don't know when it's going to roll into the rotation. I'm thinking of getting some of the other stuff a little further first. Maybe apply it. I'll be honest, I'm probably not going to touch this one again until Prairie Garden is done, but you never know. 
again. I started it with the best of intentions with the idea, I, it does, fortunately it's flowers, the tulips are my favorite flowers, but I do love the colors in it, so that is to its benefit. And then my last whip is, this is also Heartstring Sampler, eh? this is Coffee Quaker, and I put this one down, mostly because it's on 40 count. Um, it is on r, r Reproductions, 40 count in Beach Brew, and it is hard to see. Like, I don't know if it was the case of all, if all 40 count is this hard to see through, because I don't have this issue, by the way, with 36, like 36 doesn't bother me at all. So, I cannot stitch on this one wearing my contacts, I have to have my glasses, and it's... And I have to, it has to be early in the day. If it's too late in the day and I'm wearing my glasses, I don't care if I put it under my big light. I still can't see. So that is the hardest one for me dealing with because I love, love the actual pattern. It's coffee. I love coffee. I love coffee so very much. I mean, I, I have a coffee bar in my house at this point. I have so... I make lattes at home and we have nine different bottles of syrup so I can do everything from pumpkin spice to what I think gingerbread is the one I've been working through seasonally to make that go away but I mean legit coffee I live for coffee so not having this one done bothers me a little bit but we'll get there anyway it's first I drink the coffee then I do all the things so that one's fun. My kitchen would love to have that up near the old coffee bar. So, fingers crossed I get there. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by and seeing what I've been working on recently. Recently, not recently, all of it. I'm now running my mouth. <laughs> anyway, um, I can also be found on Instagram under the Crafting Whip It. Yes, that's a C R. A-F-T-I-N-G, whip it, because Crafty Whip It was taken up by someone else, and that's cool. Uh, I'll also have the link down below. And if I did say that I made it sound like I've done nothing for one year, I did open up an Etsy shop last year. It has not that many sales on it, but it is mostly its crafty stash, because I honestly have too much stuff in my house from all of my ambitious crafting. And I do have some cross-stitch patterns on there, some yarns. Right now it's mostly vintage patterns or stuff that my kids have outgrown and it's never going to get, I will never make it. So um, feel free to check that out. That is Crafty Whip It at Etsy. Again, the link will be below. But thank you so much for stopping by. I am making no promises and I'm going to be back here doing this again next week. But I will say, I found a new spot in my house that I'm actually like, oh, this can kind of work really nicely. So... Hopefully I will be back next week. In the meantime, you will find me posting on Instagram. I've been uh, putting new pictures up about every 48 hours. So in the meantime, take care. Happy stitching to you. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. And I'll see you soon. Bye.